This is East Idaho Newsmakers with Nate Eaton. Welcome to East Idaho Newsmakers. Today we're going outside. We're talking about the public lands in Idaho. Many of us here in the Gem State love to spend time outdoors on the public lands. And we have in two people here, both named Rob. They're passionate about the outdoors, passionate about what is happening with the land here in Idaho. We have Rob Thornberry and Rob Parkins. Uh, tell us which organizations you guys are with. Uh, my name is Rob Thornberry. I'm the Idaho Field Representative for the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership. We're a national nonprofit with the goal of amplifying the voice of hunters and anglers. And Rob? My name is Rob Harkins. I am um, a Vicar, Idaho resident, and I'm a hard goods buyer for a sporting goods store. Um, I'm a representative, a board member for the American Fly Fishing Trade Association as well as the Region 6 representative for Idaho Backcountry and Anglers. And both of these men are uh, members of the Facebook group called Idahoans for Public Lands. On the Facebook page it says, Idahoans love their public lands. Our national forests and public lands are treasures that belong to all Idahoans and all Americans. Why do you think there's a need right now for this group and for you all to become so involved in public land issues? Uh, from my point of view, um, public lands is uh, the foundation of a thriving, self-sustaining economy. Uh, the threat that I see is, is that single interest, business interest, want to have access to those public lands for their own profits, and I'm against that. Well, for me, it's a little more, it's a, it's a selfish reason. Um, I make my living through the outdoor industry, uh, being outside with hunters and anglers, but also that's what I do. Um, on my, in my free time, I, I fish, I hunt, and that's what I've done all my life, and that's what my friends do, and I wanna make sure that we're able to make a living and enjoy ourselves on our days off, and I truly hope that other people will be educated and read up and learn about the public lands fiasco that's going on right now and what we can do to further the cause and that they would get involved to, to help themselves as well. In your eyes, what is that fiasco? What is happening now that people need to be aware of? With public lands right now, is it, with the political climate we have, is there are a lot of people that want to transfer the federal lands, which are all of our lands, back to the states. Um, they feel that the states can do a better job of managing them. Um, as we've seen in the past, and what we could look forward to as well as the states cannot afford to manage the public lands. The fire suppression bills alone would be way too much and, and they would break a, a state. But there's other, other means as far as law enforcement, um, wildlife management, all that would just rest on the state as far as the federal government. Rob, why would the states want to take over these public lands? There's a, a belief that public lands are being mismanaged or poorly managed and that local control is um, a better way to do it. I believe that's a straw man argument. Um, the people who are making decisions on our public lands in Idaho are Idahoans. They're the people we go to church with. They're the people we have little league games and youth sports. Uh, they're helping us address issues on public lands. Um, I think that's why we've got to stay involved. Why are you so passionate about this? Uh, the public lands has been everything in my life. Um, I grew up hunting and fishing. Uh, you could walk out my back door and walk from Colorado to Montana without crossing anybody's property, but public property. Um, it, it was my career. I was an outdoor writer. Like Rob, uh, I was vested in it. Um, it's where the, the world makes sense to me, out in the quiet. A lot of people know, you know, I want to go camping, I want to go hunting, I want to go fishing. It's nice to go for a drive for 20, 30 minutes, maybe a couple hours, and put up a tent and, and spend a nice weekend there. 
But there's more than just that. The, the public lands are a big economic driver. In fact, uh, the Outdoor Industry Association says that every year Americans spend $646 billion on some sort of outdoor recreation. That includes gear, vehicles, trips, travel expenses, whatnot. And 74% of Idaho residents participate somehow in outdoor recreation every year. So we go outside, we play, we enjoy the public lands. What does that do to our economy, Rob? I, I would say, let's take Yellowstone Park as an example. 26 years ago when I moved here, they had 2 million visitors. It was a nice little economy. And in the 20 years since then, we had 4.5 million visitors uh, visit Yellowstone National Park last year. Bus loads of people spend weekends in Idaho Falls, uh, shopping here, buying gas, uh, eating, lodging. It's, a, it's an essential part of our economy and the beauty of this economy is, is if taken care of properly, it's renewable forever. Rob? And you have to look, um, Idaho alone, uh, the outdoor industry supports 77,000 jobs directly. Yeah. Um, if you look at just East Idaho, um, we have manufacturers, lodges, fly fishing guides, shuttle drivers. Um, if you look at just in Idaho Falls, you have Rio Products, which is one of the le world's leading manufacturers of fly lines and leaders in Tippett. They employ about 100 people. Um, I would say just on the Snake River watershed in East Idaho, that there's over 1,000 people employed directly by fly fishing, and that doesn't include the ancillary hotels, lodges, what people are bringing to this area. And it's important for all of Idaho. It's $6.4 billion in consumer spending in the state of Idaho. Have you noticed as a business owner over the, the years, have things changed for you? I think that the, the biggest change is we're seeing an increase in sales and, and that's great. But the other thing that we are seeing is a lot of our customers are a lot more involved in, in the environment. They want to know that they could come out west if they're from, wherever they're from and they're going to be able to have fun and recreate and do what they want, whether that's bird watching, fishing, hunting, or hiking on public lands. Any idea how many people get hunting or fishing licenses every year? Uh, it's like 250,000 in Idaho. Wow. Uh, I want to go back to a point that Rob mentioned earlier about the state not being able to pay the bills. Uh, in the infamous uh, Republican gov gubernatorial debate with Harley Reno, do you remember that one? Oh yeah, that one went viral, right? If there was a question in there later in the show about transferring public lands to the state. And Go Governor Butch Otter said, well, okay, let's think about this for a minute. If we get a major fire, an enormous fire, how are we gonna pay for that fire? And he sat there and he looked straight into the TV. He said, we're gonna cut education, we're gonna cut prisons, we're gonna cut health and welfare, or we're gonna sell the land. What do you guys think is gonna happen? Do you think they're going to cut education to pay for a fire? No, they'll sell the land and the economy that Rob and I have been talking about will dry up. Hmm. So land, land advocates or land transfer advocates would say, well, maybe the local government would be better, would be better at maintaining these lands. Do they have a point? No. Um, the point they're trying to make is they want to bring the management of the lands back to the local, the local areas that they know more than they do in Washington. Um, anybody that's written a letter to their senator or representative in the last year about some of the public lands bills that have come up in Congress have received letters, um, one of them being about BLM planning 2.0. And the whole point of that, and that was that is a big part of Rob Thornberry's job, is to bring that management to the public. It allows the user groups that are actually using the land to participate in the process of what should be done. And the letters that everybody got back from their representatives said that um, BLM 2.0 takes that away from the locals 
and brings it back to Washington, which is false. The people who work for the BLM, that work for the Forest Service, the user groups, they live here. They see what's going on. And they may have a differing point as far as what they want to see done with the land, whether it's an extractive industry, whether it's grazing, or whether it's recreation. But we've shown uh, with the 3,000 plus people that were on the State House steps is that we can work together and there is common ground somewhere and we could work together to make sure that the, the proper things are done on these public lands. You mentioned the rally that was held a few weeks ago, probably a few months now. A month. Uh, mm -hmm. A month ago. Were you surprised by the turnout? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I was hoping for bigger. <laughs> it, it, outdoors is, is religion to people. It's why you get up in the morning, it's why you go hiking, it's why you go hunting. It, it's something that's core to your values. And when you live in the West, your values are tied to, to the open lands that we get to use. I think all of them getting together, I think that if uh, land transfer effort ever took serious root, um, the outpouring of people that, to defend public lands would be enormous. Yeah, what was the purpose of that rally? It was to make our voices known that public lands users are an, imp an important part of this state and public lands are an important part of our state and that we're all gonna work together to ensure that we have those, whether it's the Frank Church Wilderness or it's the South Fork of the Snake, whatever it is, that we will come together. Um, and there's just been a groundswell of support speaking on behalf of backcountry hunters and anglers. Within four years, we went from 1,200 members to 12,000 members. Wow. It's, it's huge. Um, Representative Chavetz, when he announced that he was, or proposed HR 621, he, the, the support, or I should say, the pushback that he got was over 30,000 people going to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and beating him down where he finally dropped the bill. Dropped the bill. Um, Yvonne Chouinard, the founder of Patagonia, after that happened said it was the first time in his memory that hunters and anglers have come together to fight a public lands bill. And we're all coming together. It's not just hunters and anglers, it's everybody, but we're making our voice heard where it hasn't been in the past. I'm sure you all followed the, the situation in Utah where the outdoor retailers pulled out mm -hmm. of the state. For those people unfamiliar, do you know enough to talk about that? Do you know? Yeah, t tell, us, tell us what happened down there. In Utah, the delegation and the bulk of the elected officials want to give Bears Ears National Monument back to the state. That area is being protected for its incredible scenic and spiritual value to Native Americans. Uh, it was 20 years in the making. Everybody came together from every walk to protect this, including the Native American tribes there. Um, and the governor's office and their congressional leadership wants to dissolve that agreement that Obama signed late in his presidency. And the outdoor retailer show went to the governor's office and said, you've got to rethink this. We are an industry. We are a business leader. And the governor said, pound sand. So they're taking the show to a state that values the tourism that comes with hunting, fishing, hiking, biking, camping. Idaho, maybe? I don't think Boise is big enough. Not. Wouldn't that be nice? It is, it is a huge show. There are, yeah. just, there are very few states that would be able to accommodate the show. Do you, you mentioned a minute ago, Rob Thornberry, that uh, if there ever was a serious uh, push to transfer these lands, that the, the outcry would be huge. Has there been, a, has, have we been there before and do you foresee it? Absolutely, we're in it right now. The, the land transfer advocates, and my challenge to you as a journalist is, go follow the money. Go see who funds that. See if you can find Idahoans that are supportive of giving away their public lands. Um, we have a chance to make our voice heard and every session of the Idaho legislature and U.S. Congress has some bill attacking the free nature of public lands. Everyone. 
It's like playing whack-a-mole. Every year they pop up. They're in different areas. They'll tie different strategies. And the people who are behind them have deep pockets and are playing a long game. So we have to be ready to play whack-a-mole. But with that being said, this is the first year in Idaho legislature in numerous years that there has not been a public lands bill introduced. And that is certainly part, in part because of the 3,000 plus people that were on the state house steps. Few people will tell me yeah. this, but when Rob is more of an optimist about the Idaho <laughs> legislature than I am, things are going our way. It, it's, in all seriousness, it's, a, it's an ongoing problem. It's as old as development of the West itself. There have always been individuals who have wanted to make their fortunes on the ground. And fortunately, our leaders in the past have known wisely enough to keep them in the public trust. And we've got to continue that. So for the mother of two or three kids watching at home right now that has her hands full, has a million things going on, why should this matter to her? What the average Idahoan? Uh, have you heard the term nature deficit disorder? Mm -hmm. Um, children that do not get enough time in the outdoors and, and in nature uh, tend to have more weight problems, tend to have more ADD issues, tend to have more problems in, in school. The outdoors are a key to us functioning. Uh, they teach us exploration and wonder and the scope of our own size. That's why the mother of two, she should take her kids to North Manan Butte and go for a hike and watch the smiles on her kids when they're out there playing in the outdoors in our public lands. Rob? For me, I, I would say to, to that mother is the same thing that we do at the American Fly Fishing Trade Association is where we promote the sustainable growth of the fly fishing industry. The two things that re, we require to have that growth are our public lands and clean water. What we've seen in Idaho in certain areas where there have, has been extractive resources or extractive mining done on those public lands is destroyed a watershed. Um, if you look at the Blackfoot River, which was historically a world-class fishery, unbelievably healthy. You look at it now, it's, it's practically sterile. Um, there are problems with the fishery. If you go into the end game into Blackfoot Reservoir, is what we're seeing is inhospitable environment for trout. Is it, it's just loaded with carp, and that's one of the reasons why. If we don't protect this, is what's going to happen is we're not going to have clean water. We're not going to have a clean environment for her kids. What's the biggest threat right now? Misguided legislation. And uneducated. Um, public as far as knowing what's going on. If there's one thing I could say, it's, it's to encourage everybody to read up, to, to learn Absolutely. what's going on with this. I mean, it's surprising for me is how many people don't know exactly what those threats are. Um, you know, being in the fishing industry, I talk to a lot of guides. Um, we there's probably 120 plus guides employed on the South Fork of the Snake. And most of them don't know these threats that are that are upon them and they make their living off of public lands. You know, they have to have permits from the state of Idaho, from the Forest Service, from BLM. That's where the boat launches are. And if, if they don't get involved and write letters, then they may not be able to have their livelihood. Give us some suggestions of websites or literature that, that our viewers can go to that aren't, you know, that, that's straight down the line. I, I would start with the reporting of the Salt Lake Tribune. Uh, they have really, since Utah is the core of the land transfer movement, uh, they have taken a really objective look at it. Uh, if you want more of a history lesson, I would read Wallace Stegner's uh, biography of John Wesley Powell called Grand Canyon and Beyond the 100th Meridian. Um, the other thing I would encourage people to do is get involved. How can they get involved? How can that mother of two or three? Writing letters, that's an easy thing, or making phone calls to your representative. Um, they do listen. Um, I know a lot of people out there may think that your representative isn't going to listen. They do. Um, 
It's been proven in other states. It's been proven with uh, Representative Chavetz. If there is enough input, they're going to listen. That's our con constituents. And the problem is, is that in the past, they have not heard that. They, they'll probably hear it more from the Farm Bureau or the extractive industries. And they're not hearing it from the people who want that access to public lands. But um, as far as resources, what I would, I would recommend is there's a great one on keepitpublic.org is they um, made a great video on the history of public lands. That's one way to get started. Um, of course, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers is another one. It is, it may be a little slanted, but they do present all the views. Uh, High Country News is another one. Do you predict more rallies next session? Is that kind of when the... I don't know. The, there's a lot of interest in it. It seems to ebb and flow, the sagebrush, rebellion of my youth and now the recent efforts, uh, it's hard to tell. Um, I know they're not sleeping. I know they're not quitting. I know they'll be back with some different angle at it. Um, and to other uh, points to, to look for for resources, sportsmansaccess.org. Uh, Men's Journal has been a leading publication on this. Um, the local post register has done a good job on public lands, the Idaho Statesman. Um, and then finally, uh, again, be visible. We're an active democracy right now. Absolutely. I know when you held your rally, we put up a story on it and on Facebook, there it was shared, it was read, it was one of our most popular stories of the week. So people do care. Uh, and people, I think, want to be educated, and that's one of the main reasons for doing this show today, is to talk about the public lands, and, and I think that there's something everybody can do, as you mentioned, even if it is taking your kids out and going for a hike up the Manan Butte, and the weather's finally warming up, but we can do that. Rob, per sure. Rob Parkins and Rob Thornberry, thanks so much for being here. We have links to the Facebook page for the Idahoans for Public Lands in the section below. We also have prior episodes of East Idaho Newsmakers. We'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.